Hey, what's up, fellas? We're back out here at White Sands Proving Grounds today, and I made a pretty cool discovery, actually. What we're looking at right here is a 157 kilowatt burner, and I have never been able to run a single waste oil burner this small anywhere near that. Typically, 50 to 60 kilowatts is the most you're gonna get. So we seen this thing running yesterday on propane at various settings. It can also run on very low settings, but essentially the purpose of the project is the refractory castable combustion cones. That's what we're working on. This right here is a submersion curing process. And what that does is gives you way more strength than your typical concrete cure. These were also fired in a pellet stove up to 500 degrees to bake them out. And this is how strong they get. Yeah. Excuse my appearance. I'm not going to shave till Trump gets elected. It's not a strike though. I just can't afford razor blades. Dude, I'm pulling on this really hard. I'm kind of a weak guy because I can't afford food either. Okay. It's getting a crack in it. I almost hate to break this one, it works so well. But this is what we do here. Come on! Okay, so these stainless steel fibers were added, and I think it was like 1% by weight or something like that. I could be wrong, I'll have to check, but this is what we come up with. And this thing has been fired on propane, turned on and off like 10 times, and it's pretty durable. But I still think we're gonna go with the stainless steel cowling on that. But right here, I'm just kind of floored by the performance of this thing on the high-end output. I've never been able to get a single burner like this, this size, do anywhere near 100 kilowatts. Usually you're stuck right around 70 at max. But this design allows you to turn the air and the fuel all the way up on this nozzle, which is just not typical. Usually you'll get a flame out. I can tell you right now, this design is going in the lab book. It made the lab book. The interior geometry of this thing is awesome. So now we're going to take a look at this burner here. We saw this yesterday also for you guys who were following this. That was on propane. And I cut these special grooves in the nozzle face to increase the velocity in four quadrants. Uh, so I don't know if it's going to do anything. So we're going to try it on waste oil. Something weird is going on with the way this thing is breathing. You'll see it in a minute. We're going to have a flame out scenario here that I want to show you guys. We'll just go ahead and jump to that because I'm not too interested in the performance of this thing on waste oil. It's pretty much just as awesome as most of the other burners. Nowhere near as powerful as the one that we just saw. But let's take a look here. Okay, this flame out was caused from the air compressor dying and then me starting it back up and it kicking back on to high power and it just thrusts it with a huge surge of air and causes a flame out. But look at the way the smoke is propagating upwards as if it's somehow influenced by the interior turbulence to do that. Not very cool. See it? It's kind of going up. But anyway, I just want to show you that. So just for anyone who's new here, the frame rate of my camera is running at 30 frames per second right now which is causing a strobing effect, making this flame look a lot lazier than it actually is in person. It's as stiff as a board. It looks like an oxyacetylene flame that's just as tight and as pronounced as can be. You can see here it does have kind of that upward inclination to it. So I've got something going on with my geometry, inner geometry, but I don't think that's a problem. I'm just nitpicking. Now, I'm doing this video for the pottery community because I've been studying glazes a lot lately in my research for my high emissivity refractory coatings. And in the glaze research, I've come across a lot of information about pottery and the process. And one of the things that is a problem for some of the artists is getting the temperatures and the power they need. Like to run a good sized kiln, you need three phase power. To get anything over cone 10 on an electric kiln, is almost unheard of. Now, there's not a lot of people doing glazes over a cone 10, but some people who want to melt glass and stuff like that, you certainly need those higher temps. But for the most part, this thing here can get you up to a cone 14 like a walk in the park. Not a problem at all. And that's 
that's that's pretty hot that's like 2500 degrees Fahrenheit and this thing is cracking and falling apart and we're gonna see in the, the you know in the end here eventually I'm just gonna encase them in stainless steel I just had to try it like this first to see what it does I've always wanted to do it ever since I started buying the silicon carbide nozzles those are getting really hard to get a hold of these days so I'm sourcing something new plus I've had a couple customers who have reported breaking those it takes like a year of running it 24 7 but still you know if you're gonna buy something like this it should last forever so this particular design is pretty awesome for lower power it's not quite as as um, capable as the first one we saw but this is a pretty cool design I don't know if I'm gonna go with the inner teeth or not I'm gonna go back and see if I can find some old footage of the one that we did like this without the teeth cut into the discharge port because I don't know if they're doing anything or not I mean this is a great flame for a waste oil flame phenomenal performance so I am pleased and I probably will build this one again for lower power outputs all right so this is the best footage I could find so far of this thing running without the teeth in the discharge port so I don't know man maybe they are doing something this flame don't look as good as the flame we were just looking at here in a second I'll show you a cross-sectional diagram of what exactly it is I'm talking about by discharge teeth this thing's doing something different it, it's I don't remember being able to run it this high on waste oil last time I tested it so now I gotta build another one without the teeth and um, cause just this thing this is the one with the teeth and I feel like it's able to crank out way more power than the one that didn't have it. Like it's given us that extra turbulence that we need for higher power. All right, fellas. So this thing did phenomenal on waste oil. I may have to do some further testing on this nozzle difference. I don't feel like I've ever been able to turn the fuel and the air all the way up like that. I don't think we did that on this one. I think it was wanting to sputter out when I did that. So the super secret high tech grooves did nothing that I could see. In fact, it made a couple of cold spots. So I was hoping something really cool and weird would happen. You know, maybe we could look at that further with some smaller ones like I have on the diagram over there. But for now, I was thinking what we would do is right here at the last moment we would at the last moment there's a steep velocity increase you see this angle right here and it would look like this at every 22 and a half degree position and this is just one at every quadrant for illustration purposes this is just kind of what the mold would look like on the outside but I was thinking uh, if it had this last little lip that would really increase the velocity right there. And um, I thought maybe it would help the waste oil flame out a little bit to collide those last little couple particles. And I don't know. I just don't see this thing failing on its own. I still think I'm going to put a cowling around them though. But I kind of don't want to break it. If it survived that much torture, maybe we'll do a little bit more testing with it or something. We'll break this other one though for sure. I'm going to bust it. Take one for the team. That one didn't have a whole lot of fibers. where we needed them on this side. It was deficient. I wanted to throw it on the ground and bust it. So there's a couple spots that don't have enough fiber. We want to see this everywhere, but we did not. So, you know, it's not the toughest thing in the world, but it's pretty strong. And again, there wasn't a single fiber 
orient it in the position we would want it to hold anything there. So my fiber mix of 1%, I think it was. I'd have to double check. It's whatever I found on the internet. We'll take a better look at that. This circle is really strong. I can't bust that. I feel like I'm going to hurt my hands. Ow, yeah, it's getting me. That's pretty impressive. Um, I do not believe this particular piece would have lived up to that much longer. There's so many fibers missing along here. I want to see them sticking out all over. Kind of like that. So the, the fiber content's a little low. Yeah. I mean, it's got a couple. They hold a little bit, but they're not. Man, I tell you what, the piece that got really hot, it's acting a little better. That's more like it. That's like 20% in the top because it's stratified from the vibration. I can totally see that. This is loaded with material and I've got almost nothing up top. There's a couple pieces in there. So I was able to break this one. I think I'm going to let it maybe live to see another day. But we are going to encase these in a thin piece of metal. And that will be plenty to give it like an um, indefinite lifespan. It will withstand the life of the project. How about that?